Hey, I'm Sarah from Wholesale Ted, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create an AliExpress dropshipping store using WordPress plus a free plugin called WooCommerce. Not only this, but I'm going to teach you how to use a free app called Woo Dropship. This app is not only going to save you a lot of time when you're adding products to your store, but it's also going to semi-automate the dropshipping fulfillment process. Now there have been a lot of people who have watched my video where I teach you how to create a semi-automated store using Shopify and Oberlo, and they wanted to be able to do the same thing, but with WordPress. Well, thanks to Woo Dropship, we now can. It doesn't completely automate the process, but it does greatly streamline it. Now this is going to be a 14 step process, but don't worry because I'm going to be switching to my screen for each step and showing you the exact instructions that you need so that you can follow along. And here are the 14 steps that I will be going through. 1. I'll be teaching you how to use iPage to set up low cost hosting and also get a free domain. 2. I'll teach you how to install WordPress for free. 3. I'll teach you how to install the free plugin, WooCommerce. 4. I'll teach you how to add free shipping to all of your orders. 5. I'll teach you how to install a great looking free WordPress theme called Mistel. 6. I'll teach you how to sign up for a free Woo Dropship account and install their free Chrome extension. 7. I'll teach you how to use that Chrome extension to quickly and easily add products directly from AliExpress into your store. 8. I'll show you how to edit the sidebar in your new store. 9. I'll teach you how to add a custom logo to your store. 10. I'll teach you how to update your store footer. 11. I'll teach you how to add a great looking custom homepage. 12. I'll teach you how to add an About Us page. 13. I'll teach you how to add a custom menu. And finally, number 14. I'll teach you how to launch your new store so the customers can come in, buy your products, and you can make money. And I've got a bonus at the end of this video. I'm going to order an item directly from my store, and then I'm going to fulfill the order using Woo Dropship so that you can see how it semi-automates the fulfillment process. I'm just going to switch over to my computer now and give you a brief sneak peek of the store that we are about to build. This here is a preview of the store that we are going to build today. As you can see, it has a custom logo. It has a custom menu and underneath products, it has a sub menu for the different categories of products that we are selling in it. Scrolling down, you can see that we have a homepage that has a banner on it some content, and we've even got a preview of the eight most recent products in our store catalog, making it look nice and professional. And I'll show you how to do all of this. So I'm just going to open up a product listing now for this Travel Lens coffee mug. So here is an item listing, which I'll show you how to add. You can see we've got an image gallery and the customers can zoom in on images and click to view more. We've also got some content on the page, which I'll show you how to add. And down here, we've got a related product section, which upsells the customers on more items that they might like. Scrolling back up, I'll show you that this product page works by clicking the Add to Cart button. All right, now I will just click View Cart. And as you can see, it's been added to our shopping cart, and we can now come and click Proceed to Checkout. And here we are on the checkout page. All customers have to do is fill out their details and then complete payment with PayPal. And they don't need a PayPal account to pay either as PayPal lets them check out as a guest. All right, so this is the store that I'm going to show you how to build. Let's get started. Step one, create an iPage account and set up low cost web hosting and get a free bonus domain name. To get our web hosting and domain name, we're going to be using one of my favorite services online, iPage. Now, I recommended iPage a year ago in my last WooCommerce tutorial. Back then, it cost just $23.88 to get a 12-month web hosting and domain name subscription. Since then, the price has been bumped up a little bit to $35.88, but it's still easily the cheapest and best solution for beginners who want to get up and running fast because trust me, I looked into a lot of other options and nothing else compared, so I strongly recommend it. To follow along and get web hosting and a domain name from iPage for yourself, simply click on the link in the video description below. A quick disclaimer, our video description does contain affiliate links. Here at Wholesale Ted, all of our video content is free, and affiliate links help us keep our videos free. Let me switch over to my computer and show you the exact step-by-step -step process of creating an account with iPage. Okay, so this here is the homepage for iPage. 
Now remember, you can find a link to this in the video description below. So come and click sign up now. On this screen, we're going to select the domain name that we want to use for our store. For this example, I'm going to be using brewedtreatscoffee.com. When you finish typing in your domain name of choice, click Check Availability. iPage will look to see if the domain name has already been registered. If it hasn't, then you can register it. I strongly recommend getting a .com domain name for your store as it looks a lot more professional. Okay, so if your domain name was available, you'll be able to continue with the registration process. I'm blurring out my personal details. You'll need to give your first name, last name, email address, phone number, street address, city, state, zip code, and the country that you were based in. Be sure your details are accurate, as ICANN requires by law that your domain name is registered under your real contact details. Next, you'll need to enter your payment details. You can pay with either credit card, debit card, or PayPal. Again, I've blurred out my details for obvious reasons. Here at Purchase Information, you'll see it has by default set to a three-year hosting plan. Change this to be a one-year hosting plan. At the time of this video being created, it is just $2.99 a month for a one-year plan. Now, I like having domain privacy, but if you want to save money, deselect it. You're scrolling down to Website Essentials, you'll see that iPage are trying to upsell you additional extras. First, let's talk about the SSL certificate. If you want to accept payments with a credit card on your domain name, like with Stripe, you need to purchase this. If you want to get this, get it now, as it is the cheapest you'll ever get it with iPage. If you want to save as much money as possible, then don't tick this because you can still accept payments with PayPal even if you don't have an SSL certificate. But if you want to get an SSL certificate, now is the time. By default, they have the Advanced Site Protection Plan selected. Deselect this as even if you want this feature, there are cheaper ways to protect your site. And deselect the Daily Backup Edition as you can do this yourself for free. Once you've deselected all of the additional extras iPage has added for you by default, you'll see that the price has dropped to just $35.88. So now you can click checkout. So this page is just a survey. You can ignore it and click no thanks. This is another page trying to upsell extras to you. Now, on this page, you'll see that the SSL certificate price has been bumped up to $39.99 a year. As I said, if you want to get the SSL certificate, be sure to get it at the start of the checkout process, when it's the cheapest. Now you just need to wait for iPage to set up your store. This process took me less than a minute. While it's setting up your store, stay on this page. Don't get concerned that it's not working and click away if it's taking some time to load. All right, so when it's done, come and click log in. On this page, you'll need to set up your account password. So go and create one. It needs to be six characters long, contain an upper and lowercase letter, contain two numbers, and have one special character like an exclamation mark. Next, set up a security question. iPages support staff will use this to verify it's you if you talk to them over live chat or phone, so create one that you will remember. And next, you can fill out the referral information. Uh, you can say that you were referred by Wholesale Ted, but you really don't have to. Now just agree to the terms of service and click Save and Continue. And that's it. We have created an account. On this page, click Go Home. Doing this will take you to your iPage control panel, which is where we need to be for step two. So stay here and don't close it because we'll need it for the next step. 
Step two, install WordPress for free. Let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so we're back here on the control panel. Come and click WordPress. So to install WordPress, we need to use the Mojo Marketplace. So on this page, just come and click Continue Installation. So now we need to select which domain name we're going to install WordPress on. Select the www.yourdomainname option, like I'm doing here, and do not click the one ending in iPage. Keep the direction section empty. Scrolling down, I recommend deselecting these plugins. I mean, you can install them later if you ever choose to use them, but we don't need them for now. Scrolling down some more, you can see that they're offering to let you pay to install WordPress for you, but we're literally about to install WordPress for free, so ignore this. Come back up here and click Next. It may take a while to load. Now, do not click away. This is perfectly normal that it takes some time. There isn't anything wrong, just be patient. Once it's finished loading, it's going to warn you that the install directory isn't empty. Now, don't worry about this. Just click I confirm that it's safe to overwrite any content in this directory and click Next. On the next page, you'll be asked to fill out site title, create an admin email address, and an admin username and an admin password. Fill out all of this information. This is going to be the login information for the dashboard of your new site. Now, you don't need to worry about the site title because we're actually going to be deleting it later. So click Next once you're finished. It's going to take a little while for WordPress to install. Again, don't click away thinking that there is an error or a problem with your connection. Stay on the page and let it load and install WordPress on your new domain. It should take about a minute or so to install. It may take longer depending on your internet connection. So again, don't get discouraged and click away. Once this has been installed, I'm actually going to be showing you how to access your WordPress dashboard by typing in the URL to it into your browser. Okay, so now that WordPress has successfully installed, come up to your browser, type in the domain name of your new store. At the end of it, type slash WP dash admin and then click enter. This will take you to the WordPress admin area of your site, which is how we can go and edit it and make modifications to it. So here on the page, you just need to fill in the login details that you created earlier, your username and your password. And then once you've filled in that, just come and click login. When you've logged in, come to this button and click I don't need help. And when you've clicked that, that's it. Step two is finished. It's now time to move on to step three. Step three, install WooCommerce, a free plugin. Let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. All right, so you firstly need to open up the WooCommerce site. I'll have a link on how you can get here in the video description below. Start by clicking Get Started. On this page, you'll need to create a WordPress account. We'll be using this WordPress account for step five when we install Mistel, our theme. Now make sure you use a real email address as in step five, we'll need to find the verification email to verify our WordPress account before we can download Mistel. Click sign up. On this page, select that you don't have a WooCommerce account and then click continue. After this, you'll be taken to a series of questions. These questions are just a survey. If you want to help WooCommerce, you can fill out the survey. If you don't want to, you can just skip any question by clicking continue without selecting any answers. Now, I personally don't really mind answering questions though, because of the fact that WooCommerce is a free open source plugin and I don't mind supporting it. So you can see here that I've answered a couple of questions for them. When it comes to this page, come and select Auto Install. On this page, come and type in the full URL address of your new store and then click Confirm. When that's loaded, come and click Continue. 
On the next page, come and click Install Now. This will complete installation of WooCommerce, but we still need to activate it and personalize it with our settings. On this page, come and click Activate Plugin. Now, it may take a while for this to load, but again, do not click away. This is perfectly normal as this is a very large plugin to install. All right, now we need to set up WooCommerce. Select Let's Go. Don't worry about this. It's just explaining how it's going to set up important pages like the checkout for you. Come and click Continue. Now on this page, you're going to need to select uh, what country your store is based in. I personally recommend just selecting your country of residence. Now I recommend that you use United States dollars as your currency of choice, since most of your customers will be based in the USA, unless of course you plan to set up a store to target a specific country like Britain, in which case you'd obviously select pounds, but most people are gonna be targeting United States residents. So coming down, I recommend that you use pounds as your unit for measuring product weight, as again, most of your customers will be based in the USA. And because of that, I recommend that you use inches as the unit that you use to measure product dimensions. After this, click continue. Now don't worry about taxes right now. I'll have a link in the video explaining sales tax and WooCommerce in the video description below. Just come for now and click continue. On this page, select the payments that you will accept. Now, everybody watching this video should select PayPal. Uh, now, you should be sure to put in your actual PayPal address. If you do not have a PayPal account, I recommend that you pause this video and that you go and you set one up immediately. I strongly recommend using Stripe to select payments if you purchased an SSL certificate, but only if you did purchase one because you cannot use Stripe without it. After you have selected your payments, come and click continue. And that's it. WooCommerce has been set up. Click Return to WordPress Dashboard. Keep this open for Step 4. Step 4. Add a free shipping option. To improve sales and conversions, I strongly recommend having one shipping option. Free shipping. You can easily offer this because AliExpress shipping is usually free anyway. Sometimes you need to pay a little bit extra if you want to use a premium shipping service like ePacket, but luckily this is usually just a couple of dollars or less. So it's very easy to absorb into your product price. Let me switch back to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. All right, so come to the menu and go to WooCommerce and then Settings. Once in Settings, select the Shipping tab. In here, come and click Add Shipping Zone. So for the zone name, the easiest thing to call it is free shipping. So type it in. Next, you can choose to select regions to limit your shipping zone to. This is entirely optional. Let's say you selected United States. Now you'd only be offering free shipping to the United States. But since Chinese suppliers from AliExpress usually offer to ship free worldwide, I suggest leaving this blank and offering free shipping worldwide. So after you've done that, scroll down and click Add Shipping Method. From the drop-down menu, select Free Shipping and then click Add Shipping Method. And that's it. We're done. Now I've shown you how to set up free shipping since AliExpress offers free shipping. But if you'd like, you can create your own paid shipping options as well. It's entirely your choice. All right, let's move on to the next step. For this step, we need to verify the WordPress account that we created in step three. So come to the email account that you created it with and click on the email sent from WordPress titled Activate followed by your site name. So for me, it said in the title, Activate Brew Treats Coffee. In the email, click the confirmation button and that's it. You've confirmed your account. Now it's time to open up the Mistel website. Now I'll have a link on how you can find this in the video description below. Scroll down and click Add to Cart. I know that this makes it sound like you'll be purchasing something, but don't worry, it's completely free. Now come and click sign in with WordPress.com. 
On this page, log in with your WordPress account that we verified earlier at the beginning of this step. When you're done, select Login. So on this page, you will need to fill out your information. Now, I've blurred my details as it is private. Uh, you'll need to fill out your first name. You'll need to put your last name. You'll need to give an email address. And you'll also need to answer a survey question, which asks how you will use the WordPress products. It doesn't matter what you put in here, just put anything. You need to give your address information, and you also need to write down what your current tree of residence is, what city you live in, what region it is from, and your postcode. And again, don't worry about being charged money. It's entirely free, right? Just going through and filling out all of my details here. By default, it has you set to receive newsletters. You can untick it here to not receive them and then just scroll back up and then go and click purchase. Awesome, so on this page, we're just gonna come and download Mistel. Now, it's a small file, so it should be very fast to download. Once it's downloaded, come back to the dashboard for your new website. Come to Appearance and click Themes. On this page, come and click Upload. On this page, come and click Upload Theme at the top of the screen here. Click Choose File. Find where you saved the Mistel theme file on your computer and click Open. Once you've done that, click Install Now. It may take a while for it to install on your site. Again, don't click away and assume that anything is wrong. This process should take less than a minute. It may take a little more depending on your internet connection. On this page, come and click Activate. And once you've done that, you have successfully installed Mistel. It is now time to move on to the next step. Step six, sign up for a free Woo Dropship account and install the Woo Dropship Chrome extension. Woo Dropship is not only the app that we're going to use to greatly streamline the process of adding products to our store, but it's also gonna help us semi-automate the dropshipping fulfillment process. I've got a link to how you can get Woo Dropship in the video description below. All right, let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so come to Woo Dropship. Now I'll have a link on how you can get here in the video description below. Come and click Get Started for Free. You'll on this page, you'll need to create an account. You'll just need to enter in your first name, your last name. You'll need to create a username, create a password, and enter in an email. Yeah. Oh. Doing it. All right, come to the Connect WooCommerce Store box and type in the URL to your new store and then click Connect Store. On this page, just scroll down and click Approve. And that's it. You've connected Woo Dropship to your site. Now we just need to go and install the Woo Dropship Chrome extension. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to open up a separate tab and copy and paste the URL to the Chrome extension in my browser. But for you watching this video, to get the URL, all you need to do is go into the video description and click on the link that I'll include in it. Once you arrive here, just click the Add to Chrome button and then click Add Extension. When you do this successfully, you'll see the Woo Dropship icon in the top right-hand corner of your Chrome browser. Okay, so now we need to verify it. Come back to Woo Dropship and click on the little setting wheel icon. Scroll down to the WooCommerce user key. If you're using a PC, highlight this, right-click it, and click Copy. Then come back to the Woo Dropship Chrome extension and come down to the user key bit. Paste in your key, and then you just need to click update. And then that's it. We've successfully created a Woo Dropship account
Plus, we've added the Chrome extension and we've verified it. It's now time to move on to the next step, which will also be the biggest and the longest. Step seven, add products directly from AliExpress into your store using WooDropship. Let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so I'm here on AliExpress. What I'm going to do is I'm going to search for products to add to my store. Now, if you aren't sure what to sell, you can browse around for ideas. But for me, I know what I'm looking for. So I'm going to type it in now. Self stir mug and then click enter. Okay, so now AliExpress has given me all of the results for self stir mug. As you can see, there are lots. I want to figure out which of these sellers is the most trusted. So I'm going to come here and sort the results by orders. Now AliExpress is showing me sellers selling this item in order of how many sales they make. This is a good way to order it because if a seller is making hundreds of sales a week, then you know they must be good at fulfilling orders. This little e-packet tick symbol is showing up as a feature of WooDropship's Chrome extension. It's letting us know that this item has e-packet shipping available. And on the flip side, it's showing us that e-packet is not available for this item. So if you wanted to use e-packet shipping, you'd know not to sell this one. All right, so let's add this item into our store. To do so, click this button. This button is here because we have the Woo Dropship Chrome extension installed. As you can see, it's telling us that this item was successfully added to our Woo Dropship import list. All right, let's switch back to our Woo Dropship dashboard. Come to the menu, click products and then click import list. Go and as you can see, the self stir mug has been added to our list, which is great. I'm going to go back and find another item to import first though, so that you can see how to import multiple items at once to save time. I'm going to do a search for a camera lens travel mug. Once again, I'm going to order the results by number of orders a seller has made. Scrolling down here, you'll be able to see that the Woo Dropship plugin is showing us which items have e-packet shipping available and which items don't. Okay, so I'm just going to come and add this one as an example to my store. As you can see, it's alerted me that it's been successfully added. Switching back to my Woo Dropship import list, I'm going to refresh the page. Here we go. And here we go. You can see that it successfully added this product to my import list. Now, WooDropship is a bit different from a Burlo. The WooDropship team are adding in new features constantly as it's quite a new app. But at the time of this video tutorial, I personally found it easier to make deeper edits to each product listing manually. And I'll be showing you how to do so shortly. For now, I'm going to edit the title and description for each of these products. I'm going to paste in my new product title that I've created for the camera lens travel mug and paste in my description that I've already pre-written as well. Okay, so scrolling down now, I'm going to do the same thing for the self stir mug. I'm going to paste in a new product title that I've already created and I'm going to paste in a new product description that I've already written. When you've finished that, come and click push to store. Now, this may take a little while to load, so don't click away if it does, wait for it to load. When it's successfully worked, you'll get this little message saying pushed. All right, so let's scroll back up and push our camera lens travel mug to our store now. And it's just loading, 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 being nice and patient, waiting for it to be successfully pushed. And success! Product has been successfully pushed to your store. Okay, so switch back to your WordPress dashboard. I'm going to be showing you how to create new product categories. But before I do, I'm going to come to the products page to show you that our products have successfully been pushed to our store. And as you can see, they have been successfully added. I'm going to show you how to make deeper edits to the product listings. But before I do that, I'll need to create a product category for these items that I've added. Come to the menu. Under Products, click Categories. 
Okay, so now come to name and type in your desired name for your category. For me, I'm gonna type in coffee mugs. Then just scroll down and click add new category. Okay, so scrolling back up, you can see that we've successfully added the new category coffee mugs. Come back to the menu and click products. Okay, so now come and click edit on a product you want to modify. So as you can see, Woo Dropship has added in the product title and description that we wrote. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the formatting tools here to bold some of the text in this description. You can use the formatting tools to add lots of things such as images and bullet points. Okay, so this item is what we would call a variable product. That is because there are multiple variations of this mug. The seller for this mug is selling it in five colors, black, green, red, yellow, and blue. I'm gonna show you how to pick and choose which variations you want to sell and how to modify the price for each variation. So scroll down to product data and click variations. Firstly, I'll show you how to edit the price for a variation of the mug using the black one as an example. Come here and click on this little triangle. As you can see, there is the regular price and the sale price. You don't need to include a sales price, it's an optional feature. For this example though, I'll add in a regular price of $19.99 and a sale price of $14.99. Then I'll come back and click this little triangle to close the black mug. Now I'll show you how to delete a variation using the green mug as an example. Just come and click the remove button and then click OK to saving changes for before changing the page and OK to removing the variation. Okay, so now the green mug is gone. I'm gonna come in and edit the price of the red mug, except this time I'm gonna make it cheaper on sale than the black mug, as you can set a unique price for each variation. And at any point during this, you can scroll down and click save changes to save your progress. Okay, so now I'm gonna come and edit the price for the yellow mug as well. I'm gonna set it to be the same price as the black mug, and then I'm gonna click Save Changes. And well, for this example, let's just delete this dark blue mug. I mean, why not? Poor blue mug didn't see its rejection coming. And as you can see, we've now got only three of the original five variations for this mug. Next, click Advanced. Then I suggest you untick Enable Reviews. After that, scroll down to Mist All Settings and click on the full width layout like I've done so here. Next, edit the product short description. You can put whatever you like here, but personally, I think that the product listing looks best if you use bullet points for this section. The product short description sits at the top of the page next to the image gallery, just like an Amazon listing. And Amazon has tested the conversions on their page and they have found that their layout looks great and converts great. So I like to replicate it with mine and use bullet points for the section. Cool, I'm just typing it all in now. Let's move on to the product gallery that Woo Dropship has automatically imported for us. Here you can delete images by clicking on the red icon for an image. I'm gonna delete all of the images of the green and blue mugs since we've removed them from our listing. One final step. We now want to scroll up and select which product category the item belongs in. Obviously for this example, I'm gonna add this to the coffee mug category. Then just click update and you are done. Now it may take a little while to load, be patient and do not click away.
and it's done. Let me switch to the product listing to take a look at it. As you can see, it shows that this product is on sale and that the pricing is set to be between $13.99 and $14.99. Since we set the red mug to be at $13.99 and the black and yellow one to be at $14.99. Our image gallery is working great and the images we deleted have been removed. A potential customer can come here and select the color of mug. As they do, the price changes. Scrolling down, you can see that our product description is here and the text that I bolded has been successfully saved. This looks a lot like an Amazon product listing, especially with the bullet points that I added in the short description area. So let's switch back now to the WordPress dashboard. I'm now gonna come and quickly edit the camera lens mug by doing the same thing as before. I'm gonna come into the product listing and edit it. Dropship has successfully added the product title and description to the listing. Now I'm just going to go through and bold some of the text in my main product description, just like I did before for the self stir mug. Now this product is a little different. It has no variations, so it is what is called a simple product. Now that's a helpful thing since it makes it much easier to edit. I'll show you how to edit the pricing for a simple product compared to a product with variations. So come here to product data. In the general tab, you'll see that there is a regular price and a sale price. For this video, I'm going to put in a regular price of $17.99 and remove the sale price so that you can see a product listing not on sale. Next, click Advanced and then untick the Enable Reviews box. After this, scroll down to Mistal Settings and then click the Full Width Layout. Now come to the Product Short Description. Again, I recommend adding in some bullet points. I've already written some website copy, so I'm just going to be pasting it into this box and using the formatting tools to turn it into bullet points. If you want, you can pause this video and read the website copy that I've written. This will hopefully give you some ideas on how to write written copy that makes your product exciting. So again, you can edit the product gallery. I'm actually going to leave the images though, as they are fine. Now I'm just going to scroll back up and come again to product categories. I'm then going to select coffee mugs and then I'm going to click the update button and let the product listing load. I'll then open it up so that you can take a look at it. And it's done. Let's open up the product listing now and take a look. Okay, so as you can see, there is no sale badge next to the price. The image gallery is looking great. We can switch between images and zoom in on images that are large enough to do so. Scrolling down, you can see that the product description is in here, along with my bolder text. Now, coming to the bottom here, you'll see that there is now a related product section automatically pulling my self stir mug since they are in the same category. And this is great as it helps to upsell more products to a customer since they might want them as they're related. Opening up the product listing for the self stir mug, scrolling down, you'll see that the Travel Lings Coffee Mug has been added as a related product to this listing as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna pause this video and add in an additional category, coffee spoons, plus six other products. All right, I've now added the new product category, coffee spoons, plus six other products. It's now time to move on to the next step. Step 8. Edit the store sidebar. Let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so I've come here to the cart page to show you what our sidebar on the right looks like right now. As you can see, it is very, very ugly and designed like a blog sidebar. But we don't have a blog, we have a store. So let's change the sidebar. Come to the dashboard, then go to Appearance in the menu and click Widgets. Come here. Now what we want to do is delete all of the widgets under the primary sidebar. And to do this, it's really simple. Click the little triangle next to each one and then click delete. And it's that simple. Just come and delete all of these widgets just like that.
we're going to be replacing these with a single widget that's going to highlight the products that we added in step 7 instead. And that's going to make the sidebar look a lot nicer and a lot more professional. Okay, so once you've deleted them, scroll down until you find the widget titled WooCommerce Products. Click the widget and then while still holding it, drag it all the way to the top of the screen and then drop it under the primary menu. Then, keeping all of the default settings as they are, simply come and click Save. Go. Great, now I'm going to switch back to the cart page, refresh it so that you can see our new and updated sidebar. And there we go, our new updated sidebar. It will now automatically feature the five latest products in our store. It's now time to move on to the next step. Step nine, add a custom logo to your store. Let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so I'm here in the product listing for the Travel Lens Coffee Mug. On the top left-hand corner, you can see the Mistel logo. We are now gonna change this to be our own logo. So come to the dashboard and scroll down to settings and then click General. On this page, come and delete the site title. Next, come and delete the site tagline. Then scroll down and click Save Changes. Okay, now come to Mistel in the menu and click it. Come to the custom logo and click the Upload button. Click Upload Files. I'm dragging and dropping my logo I've created into here. Next, come and click Use Image as a Custom Logo. Okay, now you need to untick the box next to Text Title. Then come and untick the box next to Site Description. Then just scroll down the page and click Save Changes. And that's it, we are done. We've now successfully uploaded a custom logo. If you wanna get a custom logo made cheaply, a good place to get one is Fiverr. I'll also have a link to a free logo creator in the video description below. Step 10, add a custom footer to your store. Let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so if we come to the footer for our store right now, you'll see that there is this ugly powered by WordPress bit here. So we're gonna get rid of it right now. So come and switch back to your dashboard. On the menu, click Mistel. On this page, come and click Footer Customization. Scroll down the page. Now come to this checkbox and tick it. Now we can replace that Powered by WordPress badge with our own content here. You can type in whatever you'd like to replace it with in this box. Or alternatively, you can keep it blank like I will for this example. Then just click Save Changes. Sweet, now I'm going to switch back and refresh the page. And as you can see, it's now been removed from our footer. We can now move on to the next step. Step 11, create a custom homepage. Let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. All right, so as you can see, our homepage is currently empty. Let's change that. Come to the dashboard. On the menu, go Pages and then click Add New. Come to the site title and type in Homepage, then click Publish. Don't worry, we will customize it more very soon. Right. Come to Settings and then click Reading. Come to front page displays, tick a static page. In the front page drop down menu, select home page, which is the page we just made. Then come down and click save changes. Now come back to the menu and select pages. 
As you can see, the home page we made earlier has been set to be the front page. Now click Edit. The first thing I recommend doing is deleting this title, as otherwise it will show up as a title on our home page and it will look pretty ugly. Next, come down to the content section. I'm going to click Add Media and then upload a home page banner. I recommend you also make a banner and add it to the home page, as it helps make it look nice and professional. Once uploaded, come to these settings. Set the alignment to be centered and change the size to be full size. Then click Insert into page. As you can see, my banner is 1,250 pixels by 250 pixels. This is a good banner size to create. Now I'm going to insert some content that I've already written in advance. I'm going to highlight the title and then come and use the formatting tools to use the header two settings to turn it into an H2 header. Now underneath this, I'm going to paste in what is called a short code. This is a little piece of code that WooCommerce and WordPress understand, and it lets us create cool features on our site. Typing in this short code means that I'm gonna have the latest eight products show up on this page, and I'll show you what it looks like. I recommend that you add this exact shortcut to your homepage, and I'll include it in the video description below. You can then just copy and paste it in. After this, scroll down to Mistal Settings and select the full width page layout, and then just scroll back up and click the Update button to save the changes we've made to our new homepage. And that's it. We've now updated our homepage. I'm just going to switch back to our store now so that you can see what our new homepage looks like. And as you can see, it now includes our banner, it has the content that we added, and it has our most recent products previewed on it. It's a nice, simple, professional homepage. So now that that's done, we can move on to the next step. Step 12, create an About Us page. Let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so come to the dashboard. On the menu, go to Pages and then click Add New. the title, name it About Us like I've done here. Now come in and add some text about your new store. I'm going to copy and paste a blurb that I've already written. Next I'm going to add a picture and indent it. To do that I'm going to come and put my cursor where I want the image to go and then click Add Media. Now I'm just going to upload the picture to my site. Now this is very important. Scroll down here. Next to Alignment, select the drop-down menu and click Left. I'm going to keep it on full size and then I'm going to click Insert into Page. Now you can see that it's added the image and it's indented it to the left. Now click Publish. Alright, we're done. Now let's open it up and preview what the page looks like. And here it is, a nice simple About Us page. You can use this method to add any page that you like. It's time to move on to step 13. Step 13, create a custom menu. Let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. So this here is what our current menu looks like. Obviously it has pages we want removed. So let's go in and create a professional looking menu. All right, come to your dashboard, then come to appearance and click menus. Come to the menu name, type in Main Menu and then click the blue Create Menu button to the right. Now come to this box. We're going to tick About Us, the No Title page, which is actually our home page, My Account, Checkout, Cart and Shop, and then click Add to Menu. Okay, so let's rename some of these menu items. Come to the No Title menu item and then click the triangle next to it. Rename the navigation label as Home and then click the triangle to close it. Come to Shop. Click the triangle next to it to open it and rename the navigation label as Products. 
then click the triangle to close it. Now we're going to move these menu items around to a different order. To do so, come and click home. Hold it and drag it to the top of the menu items and keep doing this like I am. This way the menu will be ordered so that it goes home, products, cart, checkout, about us and my account. Now we want to add a sub menu to the products tab so that when people put their cursor over it, a sub menu containing the different categories of our products will appear. Come to products, then go to categories and open this page up as a separate tab. Come to the first category. If you're using a PC, you can right click the view button and then click copy link address. Now switch back to the menu page we still have open and click custom links. Paste the URL into this box and in a link text put the name of what this category is. In this case I'm going to put coffee mugs and then click add to menu. Repeat this for all of the categories you have in your store. So for me, I'm going to repeat this process for coffee spoons. If you have a Mac, you can still do this. Just copy and paste it with the Mac copy and paste commands. Once you've added your categories, Pick one up and drag it so it sits under products, but is indented like I've done here with the coffee mugs, a menu item. It should say that it is a sub item. Now repeat the same for your other categories. Once you've done that, come down to menu settings. Tick the primary menu option and then click the blue save menu button. And that's it, we are done. I'm going to switch back now and refresh the page so that you can see what the menu looks like. And here it is in the order that we put it in. And if we come to the products tab, you'll see that our sub menu items are working great. We've now just got one final step to go. We're almost there now. Step 14, launch your store. This is super duper easy to do. Let me switch over to my computer and show you exactly how to complete this final step. We are almost finished. Congratulations on staying with me this far. Now we just need to remove this website coming soon page. When you do, people will be able to come to your storefront, see it and buy items. To do so, come to the admin dashboard. Then just come and click this button here. And when you do that, it's done. Simple. Now when people come to your store, they will see the store and not the coming soon page. Congratulations on completing all 14 steps. You now have a semi-automated dropshipping store. And that is it. We are done. Well done on staying right till the end of this tutorial. And as I promised, I'm now going to go purchase an item from my store and then fulfill it using Woo Dropship so that you can see how it semi-automates the dropshipping fulfillment process. So I've purchased this guitar mug. Now I'm going to fulfill the order with Woo Dropship. To do this, I've come to Pending Orders. I'm going to click Fulfill Order. Now what Word Dropship is doing is adding this item into my cart and typing in the customer address to me automatically. Now, I'm not pushing any buttons here. It's doing all of this without any input. And this is a huge part of what makes Word Dropship an amazing app for creating a semi-automated store as it is semi-automating this fulfillment process for me. And it is a huge time saver. Now that it's finished, I can scroll down and select the shipping I want to use. ePacket isn't available for this item, but if it was, I would have probably selected that. Next, I'm going to come here and leave a message as though I was blindly drop shipping this item and request that the merchant not include any advertising or invoices with the order. I recommend adding a message like this as well if you are also using this as a store to drop ship. You can then select how you want to pay. Now I'm going to be paying with a credit card, I already have them file. Then you just click confirm and pay. 
When you do that, you'll be taken back to Woo Dropship. I recommend switching back to AliExpress and confirming that the order went through. For me, I had to confirm my credit card. Sometimes you'll need to do this, sometimes you won't. It's not Woo Dropship's fault, it's just a quirk of AliExpress. And that's it. We're done. We've successfully fulfilled the order with Woo Dropship. And that is it. With a little bit of work, we have created our own semi-automated AliExpress dropshipping store using WooCommerce and Woo Dropship. To get started with step one, simply click on the link in the video description below to get your own subscription to iPage. You can also find links to other things that I have referenced in the video description below. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe to us here at Wholesale Ted for more great videos like this.